Welcome everyone to Toddler Virtual Storytime. My name is Miss Fawn and I'm so happy that you're here again. I hope you're ready to sing some songs, say some rhymes, get your wiggles out, and of course, read some stories together. Parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, and friends, make sure you join in, participate. Take this chance to bond with your child. All of the songs, stories, and motions will help your child learn and grow. If you enjoyed today's story time, make sure to check our YouTube or Facebook page next Tuesday at 10 a.m. for a new story time video. Let's get started with our hello song. We'll start with our American Sign Language sign. We say hello like this. We say hello like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We say hello like this. Here to help us as usual with our theme of the week is our beautiful owl, Hetty, our snowy owl. And Hetty is going to help us with her eggs. So we'll see what our theme of the week is. What do you think it's going to be this week? That's a good guess. Let's look and see. All right, Hetty, which egg first? This golden egg. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look. What do we have? <gasps> Oh my goodness, you guys, it's the cutest puppy ever. I love puppies. I like how it's got little wrinkles. All right, so we have a puppy. I wonder what our theme could be. Maybe it's dogs. All right, let's look. What's our next egg, Hetty? Another golden egg. All right, let's take a look. What do we have? Ooh, okay. We have a goldfish. A goldfish. I think Hetty would like to eat the goldfish. <laughs> That's what birds do. A goldfish. Okay, so we know our theme can't be dogs then because now we have a fish. Hmm, okay, what would be dogs and fish? Let's think. All right, we have one more clue. Maybe this last egg will be our good clue, the blue egg. Let's see what we have. What is that? It's a bunny rabbit. A cute little gray bunny. Oh my goodness, what could be our theme if we have a puppy, a goldfish, and a bunny rabbit? What, what do we call animals like this? Animals that live in our homes with us. Animals that we take care of as part of our families. What are those called, Hetty? Those are called pets. Is that right? Our theme is pets? Yes. All right, so we have pets as our theme. I'm so excited. All right, Hetty. So Hetty can be a pet too, but we don't usually like to keep owls in cages because owls like to fly for long spaces. So they don't make very good pets. They're better out in the wild. Let's see, what else can make a good pet though in our backyard maybe? Let's take a look. We're gonna say bye to Hetty, bye bye. All right, we have a special kind of pet. Some of you might have this as a pet. This is a pet that carries its own home on its back. It's its own home. If you guessed turtle, you're right. The little turtle has its own shell as its little house. So we're going to do a song. It's actually more of a rhyme. And so you can make a turtle with your hands. So you can make your turtle like this with your hand and follow along with me. There was a little turtle who lived in a box. He swam in puddles and he climbed on rocks. He snapped at the mosquito, he snapped at the flea. He snapped at the minnow and he snapped at me. He caught the mosquito, he caught the flea, he caught the minnow, but he didn't catch me. <laughs> That's such a fun one. I'm gonna help my, have my turtle friend help me find our first book. Go ahead and sit down, get comfortable. We're going to read a book called Bad Dog. This is a funny book. It's called Bad Dog, but look at this picture. Is that a dog? We'll have to read our book and find out. Bad Dog by Mike Bolt. Read with permission from Doubleday, an imprint of Random House Children's Books. I <laughs> like the muddy little puppy prints. This is my birthday list. Number one, dog. Oh, 
I think she might have gotten what she wanted for her birthday. There's a little present. Look what I got for my birthday. A pet dog. <laughs> my dog has black and white fur, pointy ears, and a cute little nose. Her name is Rocky, and she is a bad dog. Rocky doesn't listen like good dogs. Hey, Rocky, come. Aw, oh, come on, you can do it, Rocky. Come here, girl. See, Rocky is a bad dog. <laughs> good dogs like to go for walks, but not Rocky. <laughs> she just wants to lay there and play with the yarn. And Rocky really doesn't like other dogs. She is great at climbing, though. Bad dog, Rocky, come down. Rocky doesn't listen. She is a bad dog. I am teaching Rocky some tricks that good dogs do. This is dog tricks for good dogs. <laughs> but instead, she's just sharpening her claws on the back of the chair. Sit, Rocky, stay. Rocky, fetch. Rocky, roll over. Shake a paw. Rocky is not a good dog. But Rocky isn't all bad. Rocky doesn't bark when the mail is delivered. And Rocky doesn't have accidents on the floor. <laughs> it's because she goes in the plant. She doesn't chew my toys either, though she does like to play with my shoelaces. What else does Rocky like? Rocky likes to sleep in the sun and sleep on dad's chair and sleep on mom's clothes. Rocky really likes to sleep. I thought Rocky liked to play in the water. <laughs> I don't know if she's playing in the water or trying to get the fish. But she is not a fan of bath time. Calm down, Rocky. See, Rocky still doesn't listen. She is a bad dog. With black and white fur, pointy ears, and a cute little nose. You know what? I think Rocky would make a pretty great cat. <laughs> Well, most of the time, <laughs> when she's not trying to get the goldfish. <laughs> and there's little cat paw prints, because Rocky's not a dog. She's a cat. <laughs> the end. There are a lot of different kinds of pets other than just cats and dogs. And so we're going to sing a little song you can sing along with me and our puppets. This is called, When Pets Wake Up in the Morning. When cats wake up in the morning, they always say good day. When cats wake up in the morning, they always say good day. Meow, 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 this is what they say. Meow, 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 that is what they say. When dogs wake up in the morning, they always say good day. When dogs wake up in the morning, they always say good day. Woof, 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 that is what they say. Woof, 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 woof. This is what they say. When mice wake up in the morning, they always say good day. When mice wake up in the morning, they always say good day. Squeak, 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 squeak. This is what they say. Squeak, 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 squeak. That is what they say. When birds wake up in the morning, they always say good day. 
when birds wake up in the morning, they always say good day. Tweet, 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 this is what they say. Tweet, 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 that is what they say. When pets wake up in the morning, they always say good day. When pets wake up in the morning, they always say good day. Meow, woof, squeak, tweet, that is what they say. Meow, woof, squeak, tweet, this is what they say. Now get comfy for our second book about pets. This one is not about mice or birds or dogs or cats or even goldfish. This one is about a pet monster and it's called Hugsby. Hugsby by Dow Pumirik. Read with permission from Viking, an imprint of Penguin Random House. We start with a little girl at a pet store, but instead of normal pets like cats and dogs and bunny rabbits, they're little monsters. This one is called Sparkles, this is Shadow, this is Biggie, this is Nono, Swiss, and Shroom, and they want to be adopted together. This one is Fluff, that's Snuggles. This invisible one is called Houdini. This one's Fifi. And last but not least, there's Hugsby. It says Hugsby is smart, cuddly, and a great listener. Here they are at the Monster Adoption Special, and she has chosen Hugsby. So she's taking him home with her to their neighborhood. The day Shelly brought Hugsby home, she knew he was not like any other pet monster. Hugsby couldn't do any fancy tricks. He didn't roll over or fetch. He didn't know how to whistle or blow bubbles. But Shelly didn't care. She loved him, and he loved her, monstrously so. They played together and laughed together and said sweet dreams to each other. <laughs> I like that Hugsby has little bunny slippers and Shelly has little cat slippers. When Shelly went to school, Hugsby waited all day long for her to come home. Sometimes he would draw pictures or bake cookies and sometimes he'd practice blowing bubbles. But really, he couldn't wait to do what he loved best hug Shelly. One day Shelly announced, tomorrow is Pet Monster Show and Tell Day. You can come to school with me, Hugsby. Hugsby jumped up and down in excitement. We just need to teach you a trick or something, Shelly said. Shelly threw a toy and asked Hugsby to fetch. Hugsby just sat and smiled. Shelly tried to teach Hugsby to juggle. But instead, he almost ate the bean bags. <laughs> he couldn't figure out how to fold a paper airplane or do a handstand. And he still couldn't blow bubbles. Finally, Shelly tried to teach Hugsby to dance, but he hugged her instead. She couldn't teach him anything. Oh, Hugsby, sighed Shelly. Hugsby was tired, so Shelly tucked him in for a nap. I love you anyway, Hugsby, she whispered. The next morning, Hugsby woke up early. He held Shelly's hand and skipped all the way to school. And the school sign says, Pet Monster Show and Tell Day. Welcome, monsters. After the school bell rang, Mrs. Peach had the children introduce their monsters, and then they all sang a welcome monster song. Shelly thought that show and tell might be okay after all. Tommy went first. Snow Guy is really big and really strong. Hugsby isn't big or strong, thought Shelly. Celeste was next. She and her monster Lottie put on a magic show. 
<laughs> Look at that. They have all these bunnies coming out of their hat. Hugsby doesn't know any magic tricks, shot, thought Shelly. Greeny is a gymnast. He can do triple backflips, Henry said. Shelly gulped. Hugsby couldn't do a single flip. He couldn't even do a somersault. There were so many kinds of monsters, and they all could do something special. Country music singing monster, karate monster, mime monster, tap dancing monster, yoga monster, superhero monster, cellist monster, soccer monster, invisible monster who bakes, tightrope walking monster, artist monster, hula hooping monster, ballerina monster, glow in the dark fuzzy monster. Shelby was worried. What was Hugsby good at? Finally, it was Hugsby's turn. Shelly mumbled, My monster sits really still, and he's a good listener, and, and... He gives great hugs just when you need them. Shelly hugged him back. Then Shelly couldn't believe it. Everyone wanted hugs from Hugsby. Shelly didn't care if Hugsby was big or strong or could do flips. She didn't care if he could blow fancy bubbles. Hugsby gave the best hugs and he gave them to everyone. And there he is, finally learning how to blow a bubble. And here they are living life together, having a great time. <laughs> I think Hugsby would be a wonderful pet. <laughs> the end. If you got to go to a pet adoption day and it turned out it was monster adoptions, what kind of monster would you like to get? Perhaps one that could blow bubbles or do flips or ride on monocycle? Or would you like one like Hugsby that just gives the really best hugs? I think that would be really neat. I would love a pet monster. Well, we are going to read about another kind of pet. Some people keep birds as pets. And one of the kinds of birds they can have is a parrot. They're really smart. They can talk. They have a good brain in them. So we're going to read a poem about parrots. This is from a book called Flutter and Hum Animal Poems by Julie Pashkis. Read with permission from Henry Holt and Company. Parrot. It's okay to stare at the parrot. Go ahead. The parrot is like a flower that talks. Pick me. Pick me. And I love this because the parrots are in beautiful colors. That's what they have there. The, birds um, with their feathers is called plumage and they have beautiful plumage and this is a neat book because it has it in English and in Spanish and in Spanish a parrot is el loro and in Australia they call them lorikeets and so that's where the loro is similar to that. So do you have a bird as a pet? Some of you do? That is an awesome pet. Well, we are going to end with our goodbye song, and we remember our American Sign Language for goodbye. Here we go. We say goodbye like this. We say goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We say goodbye like this. We'll see you next week. <laughs>